Magneto only sips mojitos incognito. I think he might have a drinking problem. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Uh, thank you to Alimony Tony for that cash phrase submission. <laughs> you know Alimony Tony, always out there paying his ex-wives Absolutely. what they're owed. Yeah. <laughs> he loves it, paying, too. Paying and proud of it. <laughs> he's, you know he's what? Really I'm going to make this my nickname. <laughs> I love doing it so much. I love, I love doing court orders so Can, much. <laughs> my court-ordered obligation. Oh, somebody mentioned my name. Oh, Al- Alimony <laughs> Tony. It's me, Alimony Tony. Oh, thank you so much for the catchphrase submission. I love playing Alimony. <laughs> How many ex-wives do you have, Alimony Tony? As many as I can get. <laughs> How many is that? It's seven. I love seven. it. I got seven ex-wives. Why they're, do you- all, they're all beautiful. I'm sorry it didn't work out. It's my problem. Maybe I got arrested development. I need to grow up. But when I, I hear about that, people I like got, you. I love are- playing Alimony. You sound a lot like my... Uh, uh, other friend, buddy, uh, what's his name? Velasco. Well, how should I know? He's your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure I don't sound different enough? <laughs> hang, walk in a very, I don't line. sound different enough to hang around. I don't think you sound different Let enough. Let me to clear hang my around. throat. <laughs> <laughs> When in the court, and that's me, Alimony Tony. Oh, hey, <laughs> ah, there you are. I Hello. love paying Alimony. There is something going around that changes voices that way. <laughs> yeah, I always yeah. wonder about someone like you, who's a serial marrier. Why? Yeah. Why do you marry so many women? I mean, do, uh, maybe you have issues that uh, preclude you, ne- uh, you know, necessitating getting married. You know, I used to think that uh, I got married for love because mm. I just have so much love in my heart. But now I realize I love paying alimony. <laughs> sure, it's that's what it is. <laughs> it's the best. That's why they call me Alimony Tony. How much in alimony are you paying per, per month now? Well, and then let's per see. annum. Let's see. Per month, I'm going to say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of $12,000. $12,000. Split yeah. up so, among the seven ex-wives. No, each. Oh, oh, oh my yes. gosh. So wow. we're talking $84,000? I am providing alimony so they may live in the manner in which they become accustomed. Oh, my God. You're paying like almost a million dollars a year in alimony oh, then. Oh, shit. <laughs> I never did the math. That's <laughs> How much money do you make? What have I done? Yeah. Are you independently wealthy? I'm independently wealthy. Oh, I, I see. Thought. Okay. Yes. How much money do you have in the bank? My mother That's... my my mother invented gaseous paper. Go. <laughs> oh, I've heard of liquid paper, but gaseous paper. What's that? Paper. <laughs> okay, liquid paper is something that Mike Nesmith's, Mike Nesmith's mom, mom invented, yeah. yeah. From the monkeys? That's yeah. Right, yeah. What a fun bit of trivia. No, I invented, my mother invented gaseous paper, which uh, NASA uses in the space program. Oh, I see. Did you also invent something akin to, did you invent VH1? <laughs> like Mike Nesmith invented MTV? <laughs> I invented VH2. Oh, okay. Yes. No, less, certainly less popular. Well, it's been very nice uh, meeting you. Well, okay. I might be back later. <laughs> okay. Who knows? <laughs> Will you be back to pick us up later? <laughs> Ah, the Simpsons. <laughs> All right. Well, Alimony Tony, everyone, uh, had uh, two very distinct voices. I'm going to go out in the lobby. Okay. And then when you need me, I'm going to come back in. Okay, sure. I'm, I'm presuming you need me. <laughs> is that where the after party is out in the lobby? The after party's always out in the lobby. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's get to our first guest. My name's Scott Ackerman, by the way. Comedy Bang Bang for another week. Is and it this door? Is it? That, yeah, that one, uh, that's a window, actually, you're yeah, looking at. Yeah, it's a new oh. studio you may not be familiar with. Yeah. Okay, this is Usually doors are not uh, see-through. You... Now, this handle isn't round. <laughs> no, it's a uh, rectangular it's handle, a, It's I a guess? velociraptor handle. That's a velociraptor. We need to be oh, able to sure, <laughs> right. from Jurassic Park 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if a velociraptor can figure it out, I'm sure you can. I believe it's oh. from Jurassic Park 1, by the way. Alimony Tony hunts and packs. If only. <laughs> I wish it was someone else to share the bird of this alimony, but I love paying it. Do you have a All wingman? Right. <laughs> What's that? Do you have a wingman, speaking of dinosaurs? <laughs> What? Do dinosaurs have wingmen? Yeah. They, they have they're wings, called, man. They're called pterodactyls. Velocirap- Velociraptors and pterodactyls team up. These movies about dinosaurs dating? All right, we'll see you later. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Scott Ackerman for another uh, week uh, of Comedy Bang Bang. And uh, what a week it is. A little later we have an Odds and Ends Man. That's uh, very exciting. An Odds and Endsman, maybe, is uh, how you say Endsman, it? Endsman, Endsman. Uh, and that's very exciting. Plus uh, an old friend will drop by. Plus uh, Alimony Tony's out there in the lobby anytime we need uh, juicing up. <laughs> 
And uh, before we do that, though. The podcast is the podcast lobby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm catching the reference. Now you are. Yeah, I'm a young man still. He is a young man uh, and uh, one of our faces still. Uh, when, When do you turn into an old man? Um, when I, is it a mental thing or is it when your physical body starts to decline? Uh, I think it happened this morning. Really? What yeah. happened this morning? I looked in the mirror and I saw I was wearing a trucker hat and a beard. And I'm like, that's wrong. <laughs> you are wearing a truck and your trucker hat says pizza slice on Extra it. cheese. <laughs> Double cheese, I believe. Double cheese? So I'll look. <laughs> it's I'm hard not, to see up there on your I'm not a, looking into a mirror all the time. Yeah, that's just, true. Uh, just this morning when I realized I'm too old to be dressed like this. I mean, you're wearing a hoodie, a trucker hat, yeah. and you are, as far as I know, you're, you're not my from, age. You're not from the greatest Why generation, I necessarily. Why am I all of a sudden? <laughs> hey! Did someone call my name? <laughs> Alan Tony, someone so, who's impersonating you. Oh, hi, well, hi, a new pastor. Oh, hello. Well, this has never happened to me before. No, you, not to me. You know, which, is the, which of us is the real Alan Tony? <laughs> well, what does my hat say? Scott, don't shoot me. I'm the real Alan Tony. Put down that gun. <laughs> Why did you mention your favorite television Shoot him. Show? I'm the real what? Alan Tony. <laughs> Extra cheese. Well, Double cheese. Wait a second. <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm lactose intolerant, so clearly I'm the real Alan Mocha. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just going to shoot both of you. No, please. Oh, oh, ow. God damn it. I'll be in the lobby. Which one of you is bleeding green? Do I turn this up or down? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah. Uh, John Hodgman is here, one of our favorite guests. Hello. <laughs> Hello, I'll be back later. Hello. To pick me up? Yes, of course. The <laughs> Simpsons? That's right. Um, it's so good to see you, John. You're That's one of our favorite you. guests. Thank and you. as far as I know, you have nothing to promote. Is that You're correct? You're one of my favorite hosts. Well, well I, have, I, have, I have only the same things to promote all the time. people come on this show and they're like, oh, I want to come on a certain week because I got this thing I got to talk about. No, You're here's just the like, thing. let me on. I'm in, I'm in town. Yeah. I was in town for a wedding, mm-hmm. and I was I'm missing. Did you. you get married? What's that? Did you get married? I I well don't. Well, I love paying alimony. <laughs> of course, it'd be your alimony. Well, please Tony, don't tell my course. wife. Yes, I got married again. Right. Wow. No. Wouldn't that, have you ever met anyone who had a secret family? I am a person with a secret family. <laughs> you are. Yes, I am. Have you met anyone else? Is what I, I guess. What I well, we don't travel in circles. <laughs> really? So the people who have secret families, there's they not some to, sort of like message board to uh, connect to talk about the issues of like, oh, I tried to hide it this way. Kind of got secret in the name. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> the first rule of secret families. My secret family is a lovely couple that lives here in Los Angeles. <laughs> okay, no wonder you're here all the that time. I, that I stay with when I, I, I used to have work here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I began spending more time with this family, this this lovely young childless couple. Did it start as a roommate uh, situation? And no, then they, just... were, they were friends. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, I, and I was tired of spending money, so I thought I would, I would stay with... With friends. That money, man, like you get a bunch of it. Yeah. And then suddenly you're like, oh, I got to give some of it to this person, some of it to this person. Tell me about it. (laughs) (laughs) Alimony, Tony, are you listening in the lobby? No, I'm reading a magazine. May I just say, the new studios here are lovely, but need some work and sound. (laughs) Exactly. A little insulation problem. Um, John Hodgman, you know him from such things as his own podcast. The Judge John Hodgman podcast. The J- Judge Sean Hoffman That's right. podcast. The Han Judgman podcast. <laughs> the Han Shot Firstman John podcast. <laughs> the Who's uh, on First <laughs> podcast. Who's on First? Did, like, why was that ever a thing? Oh. You know, because like, who, who's on First and what? What's on? Th- like, these are not names. Second. No, of course. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, how did this become a thing where people were confused? Like, oh, In, that's so funny that he's confused by what? Right. Well, vaudeville times Who was people third were base? dumb and vaudeville times. Right. And also they loved. I think they appreciated the craft of it. The wordplay, if I you got, will. It's not even wordplay, though, because these are not names. Who right. who could be construed as a name? Right. <clears throat> but what? What? Second what? base. What'd you say? Second base. That's right. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> yes, exactly. And who's on third base? No, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know. See, that's third the thing. Base. I, I don't know is on third base. I, I don't, don't know. know. We, so that should be updated, exactly. shouldn't it? Exactly. Natu- naturally. Naturally. <laughs> Home run. Uh, that's exactly Grand right. Grand rule double. That's, yep. Uh, field goal. <laughs> um, Judge Sean Hoffman is yes. here. And uh, uh, you, you say you're in town for a wedding. I was in town. I was in town to see a friend get married, and, uh, and then so I came back to visit my secret family. You did watch this friend get married. I witnessed it. You you saw it I made with it, your own two eyes. I made it legal. You the the very act of you witnessing it made it's it a, legal. Did you a, sign any sort of documents or? 
Um, I signed a thing at the hotel uh, authorizing a pre uh, pre credit card. Okay, that counts. And that's and that makes it a legal wedding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, as a friend, I I was not officiating. I have have you have officiated weddings officiated previously for for my friends Jean Grey and Quelle Chris. Okay, and uh, was that the only one that you've ever done? The only one because you know, as Judge John Hodgman, my podcast Mm -hmm. that comes out weekly on Mm Hotfun.org. Lots of people because I am a fake internet judge. Yes. Fans of the show, and there are a few, mm-hmm. will who are getting married will sometimes say, "Will you preside at our wedding?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I say, "Absolutely not." <laughs> uh, you're a. I'm not working for free for you, and B. Your wedding is not a joke. Right, and Please were they take it seriously? Were they to pay you and treat it seriously? Would you be in the market for? Well, that? then someone I said that once on the podcast as well, and then someone wrote in and said, "I wasn't joking when I asked you, and I can pay you some money." Some money. Uh, anytime anyone says I can pay you some no, money, I think it was a fairly generous offer. Pay me all the money, right? But I still all, everything you have. I still, I still, I still decided not to do it because right. there were stra- stra- strangers. They were strangers to you. It could it, be a honey trap <laughs> <laughs> for the third family. Yeah, <laughs> might, it could be a murder plan. That's true. I, I also think I've done it once myself. Uh, and Not I, for strangers, true. No, 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 for uh, two of my best friends. And I don't think that uh, – and I was uh, uh, talking to their parents the other day, and they were wondering if I would ever do another one. And I was saying, right. I don't know that I would ever do another one because I don't – I'm not close – to anyone else who's not married. Yeah. You know, I'm not that close, as close as I am to them. It feels strange to do it just for some rando or for someone who's just an acquaintance. Or even if it's, an, even and especially if it's a close friend, it's heavy. It's a heavy. It's a, it was a lot of responsibility. And I'm very lazy. <laughs> What did you do to prepare? I can tell you what I did, and let's <clears throat> let's uh, compare and contrast. I interviewed them. I uh, got all the details. Compare. Okay, compare. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying oh, yeah, it's comparable. <laughs> no, that's a compare, not a contrast. I did the same. Compare. You did the same. Mm-hmm. Okay, got Go it. On. Okay, I uh, uh, filled in all the details. You know how when you get to know someone and someone's dating someone, you you kind of get the details. Over time, they'll fill you in, but you don't sit down and really hear their whole story. As told from the beginning to the end, you kind of get it piecemeal. Is but, what I'm trying to say. But you do that as a as a, an officiant. As an officiant, you you, you have want to sit to them t- down and you got to get the story. You want of the to tell the story of their love. Right. Compare. Compare. Mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, kiss them both upon the forehead. Compare. <laughs> and then upon the tip of their penises. Contrast. <laughs> yeah. um, when I uh, want to go to the wedding, I, I want to sit and watch the show. I don't want to be You don't want to be the show. When you go to a concert, like the, yeah. are you ever hoping they call you on stage? No, that time has passed. <laughs> Have you ever been called upon stage during uh, a concert? During a concert? Like and just, just asked to strap on a guitar? Oh, and, you know what happened? I was in the front row of that Bruce Springsteen concert, and he called me up to dance. Wait a minute. Are you Courtney Cox? I am. <laughs> okay, I my think John se- has a disease where he se- thinks he's Courtney Cox. Hey, can I ask how many seasons of Friends you starred in? All of them. <laughs> God damn it, he's got it. <laughs> Trying to trip him up. Me. Um, uh, maybe of, I can I'm ask you. A lot of maybe too. I can ask you because Please. in a previous episode, I asked these questions th- thinking they had no answer. But did you? Uh, apparently, fans have alerted to me the, to the fact that these were all answered on the show. So I'll ask you. Uh, uh, right. Did this you? Is, did by you, the way, very very confusing setup. But I'm 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 with you. Did you have the apartment first, and then you met? Oh, right. Chandler and Joey, and became friends with them, or did they move into the same building across the hall from you because you guys were already? Well, friends? you know, originally my my uh, my char- I'm I'm not the character. You understand? This yes, state, but you, right? but I'm, you've said all the lines, so you I'm must Courtney know. Courtney Cox. Yeah, I'm you not must know so much about Monica it. Monica Geller, right? Sure. Just, no, I know that. So you know, I've I've had a career since you know Cougar Town. All right, just okay. Yeah, so I'll, ask Cougar, to, I'll, I'll ask, ask Cougar Town questions yeah. as well. It was not my apartment; it was a set. I just want sure. you to understand. Sure, but in the in the narrative of the show, in the friends of hers, uh, yeah, the Franz of hers. All right. Now we can talk. Okay, great. Yeah, so originally I lived there with Phoebe Buffet. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I did. didn't know Phoebe lived in every, that apartment. Every one of the friends lived in the apartment at one point or another. Really? Okay, Except because- Except for Ross. Because Chandler and Joey, they swapped they apartments. Swam, okay, a, so you lived with Phoebe swap. there first? Yeah. Phoebe, then what happened? Then she, then she moved out. Okay. And then I was looking for a roommate. Okay. And then my old friend from high school- Who's that? Uh, Jennifer Aniston's character. <laughs> <laughs> That's the detail you don't know? <laughs> Rachel! They named a haircut after her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought she was named after the haircut. 
<laughs> okay, oh, I'm not okay. sure which happened yeah. first. That's another question that I don't know. <laughs> which happened first, the haircut yeah, yeah. or the or the baby? Well, that's well, no, well that's another unanswerable question. Right. Uh, then she she uh, Rachel came in. I guess her name. Is yeah, right. but they but she she came in she, uh, she, after her wedding, and they yeah, uh, she ran from the altar and was looking for a place to live. Yeah, yeah, but we, we haven't uh, gotten to the, the 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 question, which is who lived there first? How? how no, not who lived there first. Third did you, base. Did, <laughs> All right. I'll never know. Um, John, you're uh, one of America's great raconteurs. Oh, we've, thank you very we've, much. We've talked about your book. Uh, Vacation Land. Vacation Land. I wanted to say Adventure Land, but it's Vacation Land. No, Adventure Land is a movie by... Um Greg Matola. Greg Matola. Thank uh, you, Greg. I, and- I, I, Greg, I, Greg is someone I know, and now I feel really bad. Hi, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, it's a wonderful book. I know you're not here to plug anything, but I, I love the book so much Thank that you. I. And as a matter of fact, as I was walking in to this very studio, uh, a person uh, who's doing another show, uh, I was asked me who I was on the it. show. A, and lot, I, a lot of a lot is going on. Lots here. going a on lot, here. A hub of some serious media activity. They asked me who was on the show, and I said John. And she said to me, "Have you ever read his book, Vacation Land? It's so wonderful." And I oh. said, "Well, I I read it as well, and uh, I thought the same thing, and we agreed." Great. Let me ask you we some compared. trivia questions about my book, Vacation Land. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Now, bear in mind, right. I read this uh, Labor Day of 2017. It has come out in paperback since and is available now. Okay. Vacation Land, available in paperback. Ask me these questions. No, I don't have any. You okay. have a, some sort of a canoe. I remember that. Ugh. And you bought it at an auction. <laughs> well, see, you know plenty. Sure, that's all you need to know. If you want to find out what the real story is, check out Vacation <laughs> Land. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is there a chapter uh, where you believe you're Courtney Cox in it and you just tell stories well, about you know, David am, Arquette? I'm working on a new book now, and I think half of it will be my memories of working what on Friends. What if you turned in your book to your publisher and yeah. it was all just fake <laughs> Courtney Cox m- memoir <laughs> chapters? <laughs> I have a feeling they'd be very pleased. Just to get anything. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, anything else we can talk about before we bring in our guest? Well, I'm just really glad to be here. As you say, I have nothing to plug. I was in town for a, for a wedding, mm-hmm. I want, and I wanted to see my secret family. You want to plug that wedding at all? You want to plug the, hey, the yeah, idea of marriage? Of the past. Everybody, take it seriously. Don't uh, <laughs> don't hire a podcaster to do it. You've, take, you've taken it very seriously. You've been married for what? Uh, if I had to guess. Okay, well, this is great. Okay, you and this ties into the guessing your age. Sure. Um, you're, 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 do you want a hint? Yeah, give I'm me one hint. Forty-seven years old. Okay, so if you say you're forty-seven, you're a known liar. <laughs> That's right. So <laughs> I'm a vampire. <laughs> you're also a vampire. You're three hundred and sixty-five years old. Well, vampires can't tell as the many truth. years as there are days in a year. That's right. Um, do vampires celebrate I'm, the 365? I'm, I'm, I'm very hard. hard. Thank you for dra- drawing out this question because I'm working very hard to remember the answer. So. <laughs> as to how old you are or how many years you've been married? I believe this is 2018, correct? Uh, it's 2019. Oh, hang on. Let me go back what, to my spreadsheet. Do you know what, what month you got married in? I'm always fascinated by uh, people who get married in like December or January or, you know, no. one of those months. September. September. Everyone gets married in September. I got married in September. What day? Uh, the 11th. Me no, too. no, sorry, sorry, sorry. 13th. Also me. <laughs> Did you get married on September 11th? No, September okay. 25th. 25th? Okay. 20. And in the year uh, 1999. 1999. So that is, uh, this, is a, this will be our 20th anniversary. 20th anniversary. Congratulations. Now, thank you very much. And good guess, by the way. <laughs> I did not guess. You just merely told me. Well, I don't That remember. said you are a liar. I don't remember how things go. Um, that's wonderful. And what is, the, what is the what is the 20th anniversary? You know how, like, when you, when your parents are Jello. off. Jell-O. Yeah. Jell-O. Just Jell-O. Jell-O and Jell-O salads. That's mm-hmm. the gift for the 20th. <laughs> is that is that because Bill Cosby was married to Camille for? Uh, I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Have we stricken him from the record? Who? <laughs> Third base. base. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get to our first guest. Uh, and when I say first guest, I mean because you are uh, a guest of honor and, and not really a guest, more of a Yeah, because I have peer. nothing to plug. You're I a, get it. A, a peer I'm a, a deadbeat co-host. who just came to a podcast for no <laughs> goddamn reason. Oh, what, what's this? <laughs> Excuse me, who... Uh, who are you? It's me, Alamoto Tony. <laughs> okay, I just, you were in shadow I there. was doing my warm-ups. Oh, okay. Yes. Why, why are you warming up? Well, because I'm going to be a guest on your show. 
Oh, you are? Yeah. Alimony Tony? You're yes. going to be a guest on the That's show? That's correct. Okay. He, uh, Wasn't there another guest scheduled? What happened? I didn't, we have the I odds didn't and see anyone out there. I didn't see anyone out there at the lobby. <laughs> we have the odds and ends men coming up, but uh, uh, he, you know him from the catchphrase at the top of today's show. Please welcome Alimony Tony. Hello, everyone. And Scott, thank you very much for using my catchphrase. Uh, it's my pleasure when it's that good. It's uh, difficult <laughs> not to use. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. What do you do? Are you, uh, other than uh, you're independently wealthy, you're independently wealthy. The, the son of... Uh, of uh, in the the gaseous paper, I'm the heir to the gaseous paper fortune. Uh, but do you do anything yourself other than write catchphrases? Or I'm a bit of a weird owl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know quite what that means. Do you write parody songs? Um, yes, I'd write parody songs. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you, you're certainly here's, here's, not as here's successful. One. Here's, here's one. Here's okay. one. Uh, because I was listening to your guest, Mr. Hodgman, talking about himself. Uh, he's, uh, he's a liar, a vampire. He's an old town crier. That's from. the. It's like, I'm a joker, I'm a toker. Yes, I'm a Steve Miller Man's song, Miller Man. The Joker. Right. Right. Some people call him Maurice. Who, the Joker? Yeah, some people call the Joker Maurice. <laughs> Why do they do that? That is canon in the Batman universe. <laughs> um, no it's canon really. in the DCU. Some people refer to the Joker as Maurice. <laughs> it's mostly on uh, the Gotham police scanners. Okay. Uh, you know, like, Check out Maurice. They, yeah. they, they don't want to tip we off. We got a report of Maurice. Mm-hmm. Right. He's uh, <laughs> pouring laughing gas into the bank. <laughs> that would tip off, I think. <laughs> uh, heads up, the smoker is there. <laughs> Um, so you, you, you do this for a living or have you ever well, one been out of 12, for? we have a midnight toker at the, <laughs> the gold depository. I don't know. What, are, what are some other places where they keep There are so things? many places in Gotham to rob. Isn't that strange? Yeah. Like everyone's just keeping valuable stuff. In, in all of these uh, buildings in, in Gotham. What do you think the Joker's overhead was? Because he certainly had a lot of stuff. He had a lot of uh, employees yeah, as staff. well. Yeah, staff. A lot of henchmen. That he would yeah. uh, then turn into, uh, uh, they, uh, they would have garish smiles. You and, know what, this could be naive of me, but I always assume the henchmen did it for the love. <laughs> like unpaid interns. They had other jobs, but they, <laughs> they, <laughs> they were henchmen. They do it for exposure? They believed, well, they believed yeah. in the Joker's cause. Yeah. <laughs> for exposure, that's funny. <laughs> they, we got to unionize henchmen. Exposure to the Joker's gas, of course. <laughs> that's right. Because um, they like to laugh. <laughs> they la- Just like myself and uh, the listeners of this program. Also, did the Joker have to kill the people? Because uh, being uh, incapacitated by laughter is, mm. uh, uh, that's, that's... Uh, it, that's uh, torturous in, in, in of itself. Well, you've already taken care of it. Like, the right. people get to do anything, they're laughing, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's also, I I think, not to tell the Joker how to do his job, I think it's funnier. It's interesting to me, the Joker, he uh, he kills people, which is like the least funny thing you can do, it's but he not finds funny. it he finds it funny. He which finds is it hilarious. Very twisted. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I mean, maybe that's the ironic part of the whole Joker well, if he just lore, made people but, laugh, he would be a clown. Okay, but so being, I mean, yeah. Well, like, but what are you saying? You're saying that, that maybe he could be robbing banks by doing who's on first <laughs> to distract the guards <laughs> with this incredible uh, uh, language. So he does who's on first to distract the guards, and then what? His yeah, henchmen well, then, go uh, in there and slip into the vault? Here's another right. thing about the Joker. He's called the Joker, but he's dressed like a clown. I mean, clowns mm-hmm. don't do jokes. I mean, you I know guess what I mean? he true. has a face sort of like the Joker on the playing cards. Is that what he's supposed to dress like? You think he's supposed to have the like the hats with the three bells on it and the like a jester, like, like a motley, like, yeah. like a motley, a jester's cat. motley. Yes, yes, exactly. Motley yeah. is that what? Uh, is yes, that? that's right. That's, well, that's the outfit of the jester. I'll, I'll defer to alimony. The jester's Tony. motley. The jester's so, alimony Tony. Does anyone ever call you weird alimony Tony? I wish they would. But no one does. <laughs> I wish they would call me Weird Amoni Alimony Tony. Weird Amoni Alimony. Well, I will. Weird Amoni Alimony Tony. Oh, I like the sound of that. I like seeing it on a marquee. Tell us about some of your other hits or your other, at least, parodies if they're not hits. Well, they're not hits. Uh, no one knows that I do this. It's it's a real no, shame. It, is this your debut? I, well, I've put them on YouTube. Public debut. Oh, really? Yes. What would be a private debut? <laughs> I guess doing it around the house for yourself or sure. even your loved ones. Oh, that was, so many loved ones. Oh, uh, se- seven. Do you know, I've, I've been married in seven of the 12 months. Oh, okay. Each, each ex-wife I married in a different month of the year. Which ones have you not been married in? I have not been married in January. Mm. Okay. December. Okay. Right. October. All right. Mm. July. Okay. Uh-huh. One more. May. Right. May. Oh. Wow. 
Do you uh, hope to get married in every month? Is that something that you discuss that with your That is what I want to do. That is what I want to do. And of course, you know, when you're getting married, you say to your, to your prospective wife, I'd like to get married in this month. And she says, well, I always hope for this month. And then you can bring out the big guns and say, well, another wife I married, we got married in that month. I want oh, this to be okay. special. So you're not telling them, I hope to get married in every month, because I would think the next four of your wives would know that the <laughs> marriage would be over soon. Well, there you have it. I made that mistake once and only once. Uh, may, may I ask a question, Alimony Tony? Of course you may. I've been married for a certain number of years that I already forget. And, uh, Almost so it's 20. Been a, it's been a while. And it's I, been and a while. My, in my secret family, I... I <laughs> I am, I am the son of the secret family. I'm not the husband in the secret family. Right. So it's been a while since I've been on the market. Yeah, How does an independently <laughs> wealthy novelty song writer without a particular audience find a, find a future wife? Well, it's a lot. You got to put yourself out there. Mm, okay. And a lot of times I find that I take the advice of a movie I once saw and I meet women in the supermarket. Oh. Which which yes. uh, movie was that? It's, uh, I believe it was Barry Levinson's Tin Men. Oh, Tin Men. And what I will do is I'll sh- go up and down the aisles looking lonely and sad. <laughs> That's very attractive to women. Yeah. <laughs> someone who's lonely and sad. Well, to a certain type of woman. Well, that's true. There's a someone, certain there's vulnerable some, type. There's someone out there for everyone, and I found seven of those. <laughs> <laughs> You're hoping for the full dozen. Yes, from your lips to God's ears. Mm. And then uh, if you get five more, you'll be paying... Uh, oh, sixty more thousand dollars a month, or unless so? I can restructure this alimony deal, right? Okay, because that now we're talking. This is this is going to cause a dent. <laughs> How much money do you have in the bank? Oh, let's see. In the bank, do you I keep have, some in the bank and some in the gold depository? Oh, I, I have, I have, I have money. You better watch out for the smoker. I have money. But <laughs> we, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I have money in several different places, and of course, in several different investments. So. Mm. Not all of it is uh, is liquid. Some of it is uh, gaseous. Uh, gaseous. I have gaseous money uh, that's floating all around us as we speak. That that money I keep with me at all times. It's so in the that's cloud. my that's my mad money. It's in the cloud. Yes, yeah. it's in the cloud. Precious chemicals or I love precious chemicals. <laughs> liquid gold. <laughs> liquid gold. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I, I have, uh, of course, I have uh, a safe deposit box at the bank. Of course. Where I keep uh, a lot of jewels, mm-hmm. uh, gold bars, gold nuggets, mm-hmm. uh, gold ingots. So um, so were you to liquidate all of your assets, how much yes. money do you think that we're talking in cash? U.S. dollars. Probably north of a trillion dollars. A trillion dollars? <laughs> yes. So yes. no wonder giving away a million dollars a year. Who, who cares? Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> and then divorce me and give me alimony? Can I preside over the ceremony? Because I feel like you are my really good friend uh, at this point. Scott, marriage is very serious. It's not a joke. <laughs> That's <laughs> right, it is. Can and I interview you about your love first? Uh, you can kiss me on my forehead, but not the other place. <laughs> okay. I wish that I could, job, but I have to marry for love. I have to marry for love, even though I know I will eventually get divorced. What are you looking for in a partner? Oh, I like a lady with brown hair. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said you were marrying for love. You're just into it for the brown hair. I love brown hair. Well, wait, a minute, wait a minute, Scott. That's just one criterion. Thank you. You know, he, he's just Thank beginning, he's beginning okay. a list. Would it's you not, like to hear the Criterion all, Collection? <laughs> of course. It's criteria? Not all, it's not all going to necessarily be superficial. Why is it the Criterion Collection called Criterion? Criteria, exactly. Ridiculous. Any, yeah. Anyway, brown hair, number one, with a bullet. I like a lady. <laughs> then with way a, down below is number then two. Then a steep drop off to number two is a sense of humor. I like. What do you like? When you say a sense of humor, everyone has a sense of humor. But it's their own particular sense of humor. That's right. Do you mean one like yours? Yes, exactly. Okay. Where I say things and they laugh at it. Well, we both agree. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who loves popular songs reworked with new words. Okay, so mm-hmm. so far you've mentioned someone's physical attributes and physical two attribute. things that they like about what, you. What am I, the uh, I love my curvy wife guy? Come on. <laughs> I just said brown hair. That's not that big a What's deal. What's number four? Her being curvy? I don't mind it. <laughs> I don't mind a little a gal with a little meat on the bones. Okay. I don't mind a gal who has, uh, you know, uh, very thick bones. Thick bones and then, uh, yes. then not a lot of meat or? So One or can, the other. Either very thin bones with a ton of meat or <laughs> thick, thick very bones string, with thin- stringy meat with super thick bones. <laughs> <laughs> you just like a certain shape. However it gets there, doesn't exactly, matter to you. Exactly, exactly. Well, because I buy them, I bought my wife's clothing, 
Okay. And uh, yeah, that's very nice of you. I keep a closet because it, there's nothing like it when you br- when you bring a lady home mm. and you say, I have, I, got, I have a whole closet of clothing for you. Try it on, honey. Try it on. Well, she has to fit the clothes because right. when we get divorced, I, I keep the clothes at the house. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is that in the prenup? Do you ever sign a prenup? I always sign a prenup. Okay. Always and, sign a prenup. And part of this prenup is I'm going to I'm give you- I'm definitely going to give you money. $12,000 oh, yes. a the, month? The prenup, the prenup is very, it's very brief. Mm. It simply states, should we get divorced? You will get twelve thousand dollars a month, and I gotta keep those clothes. I gotta keep those. Gotta clothes. keep those clothes. Is it worded like that? I gotta keep those clothes. <laughs> it's an asterisk. <laughs> There's a lot of legal mumbo jumbo at the bottom. Of it. I gotta keep those clothes. Has the wardrobe evolved and been added to since Wife One, or I know. is it just what Wife the, One's What year wardrobe? was the first? Uh, it's, it's updated as the as the fashions change. So I you see. throw some out. I well, I or, can't or bear to do it, that. It expands. I treat them like the American flag, and I burn them <laughs> once they are once they are no longer fit for service. I have a ceremony where I burn them. I play a bugle. Yeah, and uh, I put I I burn them on top of the oven. <laughs> So you play the bugle as well. So you are a musician. I play one song of the bugle that is Taps. Oh, beautiful song. Did you? Have it's a you beautiful ever, song. Have it's you ever written song. funny lyrics for Taps? Of course I have. <laughs> Let's hear some. Burning clothes, <laughs> burning clothes. <laughs> there it goes, <laughs> all the clothes. <laughs> smoke in my nose. No. I'm divorced. <laughs> and now I'm forced. <laughs> To burning clothes, oh, burning clothes, burning clothes. So you know this song. Yes. I, uh, a big fan. I didn't know where that came from. I saw it on YouTube. Yeah. yeah I, well, that explains yeah. the one view. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, too. I, I watched it. I don't know. Just to make sure came, there were no mistakes. Sure, yeah. don't know how I came across it, what led me there. I got down into a YouTube hole. Were you searching uh, song parodies? <laughs> I may have been. <laughs> <laughs> you just typed the words song parodies into YouTube, <laughs> and then you looked at every single listing and got down to mine. I did not look up the word weirdemony, though, oh, so I, I didn't get to it there. I'd like people to look up the word weirdemony. Weirdemony, alimony, Tony. Weirdemony, alimony, Tony. That's me. <laughs> um, so you, uh, when was your first wife? What year? When was your first wife? <laughs> when did you get married to your first wife? <laughs> you know what I mean. 1998. Whoa. So you. So we it's had been a very brief years. marriage. It only lasted a year. And then I think she married someone else. She did. Who is this? What was her name? Uh, her name was Catherine. <laughs> Catherine? Wait, wait, what? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> What's that? No, no, no nothing. It's just that, that happens to be my wife's name. Oh. How, when did you get married? Uh, September 25th, 1999. Oh, that's. Very interesting. And she has brown hair. Mm-hmm. What, uh, can I ask you a question, John? Uh, did she have big bones with a little bit of meat, or did she have <laughs> tiny bones with a lot of meat? This is how all women can be described, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange. I I don't think about women that way. <laughs> so you couldn't even hazard a guess publicly. I have not seen a cross-section of her body. Okay. To, uh, Yo, you got to see that cross-section of her body. No. In year 20, you got to get there. <laughs> I wish that that was a thing that you could see before you get <laughs> right. before you get involved with someone. Well, that's, I think that's, cross the 20, of their body? that's the 21st anniversary mm-hmm. present, right. actually. It's a, each each uh, each member of the marriage gives each other a full body scan, that's MRI. Right. Yeah. I, I, one time I tried to marry a Chinese prisoner because I, I was hoping I could get to see a cross-section of her body. Whoa. All right. What was the, uh, uh, what was your wife's uh, maiden name, if I may ask, uh, in did she change it to Hodgman? Uh, no, and no. <laughs> well, I may not ask the former, and that's right. She did not change it to Hodgman. Correct. <laughs> okay. So you could try guessing again. You're a good guesser. <laughs> I really. I've ruled out one. Which one? Hodgman. Hodgman. <laughs> okay. Is it Hodge Woman? <laughs> How that did you do would that? Be... <laughs> now this is strange. Oh my goodness! Because the... I was married to a woman named jo- <laughs> named Catherine Hodge Woman. Catherine Hodge Woman was yes. your. Well, Previous this is, first this wife. This is too much of a coincidence. I, I, I'm, I'm speechless. As, as am I, although I'm talking. All of a sudden, I realized that my wife gets $12,000 a month. <laughs> of just walking around money? <laughs> I have no she knowledge hasn't, of. She hasn't shared it with you? Wait a That's second, right. wait a second, wait a second. I'm remembering now all those checks coming back to me, unopened. Return to sender. Address unknown? She wanted nothing to do with me after we got divorced. Well, I love my wife very much, but that was dumb. You're curvy I want wife? that money. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, John the die is cast. Uh, Catherine said no. She doesn't want the money. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna text her. Okay, sure. Do you mind if I send her a picture of you? I don't mind at all. I all love right. having my picture taken. Oh wow, you're really posing. Well, I'm Tony. You're hitting all those poses, all those angles. Damn. <laughs> That's what it's about. It's about uh, tiny micro adjustments. That's, <laughs> That's the right. key to getting your picture taken and getting it over with. Dear Kath, were you married to this man <laughs> by any chance? Also, we need eggs. She probably would only know me as Tony. I didn't say your name. She wouldn't wait. She wouldn't know you by picture, by sight. <laughs> he sent a picture. Yeah, oh, she would only know Tony. Did you? Uh, did she you would disguise, only know Tony. Did you disguise your face? Yeah, we got married in the dark, <laughs> and we lived in the dark for Is it a year. One of those like dark restaurants. Yes, that you exactly. Go to? I thought that's that's the way to live. The greatest first blind date. Exactly. And we that was our almost, first date. Almost literally blind. That was our first date in 1998. We went to yeah. one of those completely dark restaurants. Yeah. Right. And we he said, s- "Let's keep this we going." Had such a wonderful time. I said, "Why should we tamper with this? I never want to find out if your hair is brown or not." <laughs> So, yeah, given if this is true for all your wives, really, yeah. the color of the hair really is immaterial. No, th- that was just the book. But I don't do the same thing. I don't. I don't live with all these women in the dark. <laughs> oh no, of course not. You don't do the same thing among your seven wives. You just make them wear the same clothes. Each of my relationships is unique. John, have you gotten a Apart text back? Face. Uh, no, because I uh, put my phone on airplane mode because I respect the studio. Oh, okay. We're so, never going to get an answer. Put my then. phone on airplane mode. Do da, do da. There's your, another. That was your other one that I That's went right. to. Oh, you saw that one too? Yeah, yeah. I'm the second view. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, I can't on, send a text. I can't get emails. I put my phone on airplane, airplane mode. mode. Now oh, I'm going to cry. Yeah, I'm t- I just took I it like off airplane. Oh, a I lot of your songs end with now I'm going to cry. I Most of them do, yes. It's. I think it's a funny punchline and you don't see it coming. Although the more videos that you watch, you kind of do see it coming. It's very repetitive. If you watch the entire playlist, yes, you will right. see. You will, but then it becomes that comedy of oh, he does it oh, every time. It's so many times, that, and then yeah. I'll put one in there where I don't do it, and then you're like, okay, uh, that's oh, right. he's done, with and it then now. I do it again. Ah, oh, so yes, funny. Exactly. I uh, I just took my phone off of airplane mode. Okay, and um, oh my gosh, I'm getting a lot of texts that have been stacked really? up. Yeah. Oh wow. Bump, 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 bump. It's really blowing up here. Bump. Wow. Uh, it's not true. I I just want to seem popular. Uh, but no, Kat, Catherine wrote back, and she said, I'm really not sure. Hang on. I got to write back to her. Sure. Oh, that's our shortstop. Send. <laughs> Classic um, comedy. Now, that's a joke a clown could love. <laughs> <laughs> well, Al, uh, uh, sorry, a weird ammonia. Oh, you can Tony. call me alimony, Tony. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, we have to take a break. Can you? Do you want to stick around? I'd Is love it? to stick okay, around. Well, I'm, uh, Scott, I'm having a wonderful time. I listen to the show, obviously, because it's do. a minute catchphrase. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we also have an odds and ends man coming up. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, I love your open door policy. Never been on the show before. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll get a little more information uh, from Catherine. Uh, we'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> Life is too short, isn't it? As my good friend Ricky Gervais once said, it's too short, but especially it is too short for bad Wi-Fi. All that time wasted. All that time wasted. Sitting around looking at that. Looking at what? When you have bad Wi-Fi, there's nothing to look at. What was I going to say? Well, look, bad Wi-Fi is a big, big problem. But I'll tell you what. The Eero home Wi-Fi system brings you a fast, reliable connection in every room of the house because life is too short for that bad Wi-Fi. The second-generation Eero and Eero Beacon allow you to build a Wi-Fi system that is more perfectly tailored to the home than ever before. Now, imagine your home, the shape of your home. I hope your home has a shape. And just imagine a Wi-Fi that's exactly the shape of your home and it fits right inside your home. That's what we're talking about. Perfect Wi-Fi. When you add Eero Plus, you will get total network protection with the ability to block malicious and unwanted content across your entire network, that network in the shape of your house. And by checking the sites you visit against a database of millions of known threats, Eero Plus prevents you from accidentally visiting malicious sites without slowing anything down. Eero Plus automatically tags sites that contain violent illegal 
or adult content so you can choose what your kids can and cannot visit right from the Eero app. You just turn on your Eero app and you're like, kid, not this one. Eh, All right, this one. Never this one. Nope, 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 nope. You can also get rid of annoying ads and pop-ups on all of your devices. Ad blocking improves load times for ad-heavy sites so you can browse and stream faster than ever before. Eero! It's better than Wi-Fi! Get $100 off the Eero base unit and two beacons package and a year of Eero Plus by visiting Eero.com slash bangbang and entering code bangbang at checkout. I know you're all wondering, how do you spell Eero? Well, let me, here you go. E-E-R-O. That's right. E-E-R-O. <laughs> Dot com slash bangbang, code bangbang at checkout. Eero. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back here uh, with our good friend John Hodgman. Uh, his uh, podcast is out there, uh, much like The Truth in the X-Files. You can get it somewhere. Uh, we also have Weird Amoni Alimony Tony is uh, with Do us. Do you know the alphabet? <laughs> I can teach you. Yes, I bet. And then I do a comical thing where I put the the letters in the wrong order and I run out of time because the song ends at a certain point before I can get out of it. That seems like the funny part. I don't know why you sang the first part. Oh, well, I wanted to give people a flavor for it so oh, they can okay. uh, sing on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Listen. What is the channel, by the way? Yeah. How do people get to it? Because you you said you wish people called you weird Amoni, Alimony Tony. Yes. The channel is entitled <clears throat> Please, I beg of you, call me Weird Amoni Alimony <laughs> Tony. These are my YouTube videos of songs that I've put funny words to. Okay. And sh- sh- you own this. Surely no one out there listening will be able to. Well, I th- here's what I think the problem is, is that it's all one word. <laughs> ah. And it's so easy to get one letter off. Yeah. To forget a, That's a, the whole a word. internet, you know? That's to the me. whole internet. That's why these things like Google, it's easy. Google, it's easy. <laughs> hey, you sound like you used to sound. <laughs> <laughs> Clear your throat again. <laughs> Google, it's easy. <laughs> All right, well, we need to get to our next guest. Please. He That's is, right. I've been hyping him up here for a uh, uh, dog's age here, but uh, he is, of course, an odds and ends man, which I don't exactly know what that is, but uh, welcome to the show, Rupert Sharp. Hello. Hey, Scott. Fellas, thanks so much. Love to be on the show. Boy, oh boy, what a thrill. It's uh, our thrill. Uh, oh. This is John Hodgman. Hey, hey how, how are, are you? you? We also- I'm a fan of your podcast. Oh, thank you. The Judge John Hoffman podcast? Oh, no, that one I don't know. <laughs> oh, check it Maybe out. Maybe it's not you that I'm listening to. Uh, there's some podcast I like, but you seem like a good guy, and I'm Can glad I ask, to meet does you. Does he ask uh, to lock the gates at the beginning of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's not John. I feel like I know a lot about you, by yeah. the way. <laughs> and your taste in guitar riffs. Oh, uh, yeah, right. That's, that's my, <laughs> if that's you're the my, man I'm thinking of, anyway. That's my side hustle. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, Weird Amoni Alimony, Tony. Hi there. Here. Oh, yes. Weird, a- Weird Amoni Alimony? Yes. Ah, what a what a iambic name. I don't know the names of the different poetic It's a pretty feet. iambic name. Sure. You could just call me Alimony, Tony, if that's easy. Hey, that's the kind of guy I like. Casual. No right. airs about you. I like, you like people casu- that don't- You like casual people? Love ca- I hate I hate formality. Do you guys like people with nicknames? Sure, I love it. Because those people, they tend to be relaxed. Yeah. You know, too many people get offended in this country these days. Oh, you know, too thin okay. skin. You don't like this whole PC culture? Uh, you know, I just a lot about the modern age bothers me. Oh, a lot about the modern age. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's right. Just, uh, things are going in the wrong direction. I and I'm no Trump supporter, by the way. I'm not a political guy. Okay. No just, one hey. said that. No one. Yeah, said just, that. just you know, I feel like I'm heading down that road by accident. <laughs> 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 right. I don't want to back. Time into for a it. pivot. <laughs> yeah, early pivot in my conversation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, listen, Scott, you were wondering what an odds and endsman is. Listen, it's a simple thing. I don't mean to to, to make this obtuse. I don't like obtuse people. I do. You're a simple man who likes simple nicknames. Names. Yeah. I do like nicknames. Yes, I would. Although call that, that seems like sort of a level upon. It seems yes. like it's almost simpler to just have your Christian name, but then to add a nickname is, I guess, makes it less simple. Sure. I guess if I had two people, all things equal, and one of them has a – they're both casual, but one has a nickname and one doesn't, I'll go with the non-nickname person. Okay. But if someone ha- wants to be called Dr. Something – Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. And then somebody over here the is like, just guy. call me Skids. I'm like, me and Skids <laughs> are going to get a brew. See you later, Dr. The, whatever. How did you know my nickname, Scott? You're a good guesser. I'm Dr. Something. That's what they call me. <laughs> Dr. Uh, something. But yeah, are you an official PhD? Or is it just a nickname doctor? It's, like an, I, it's an honorary doctor. You're like doctor. 
University of Massachusetts. I don't oh, know. I don't okay, know where yeah. I fall with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're a real gray area. Well, I think we have something. In, you say you don't like obtuse people. right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Boy, oh boy. Oh, give me a break. I'm not obtusist, but those people are really getting out of hand. I'm not obtusist age. either. Like, right. just you know, I'm friends with a couple of obtuse people because yeah. I went to school with them or whatever. Right. Exactly. But by and large, I, uh, I don't like people who are uh, who put on airs. Okay. So heavily established. You don't so, like people who put on airs. Yeah, I don't know why I dug into that so deeply, but uh, the <laughs> is, thing that, I, is that not germane to your whole deal? <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be. Um, <laughs> is it your majesty to your whole deal? <laughs> it's yeah, Jermaine's son. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Jermaine Jackson's son, your majesty, the alt. Now that's a nickname I love. <laughs> uh, it's a perfectly, it's a great name. I don't know why more I people have not named it. His, his actual given name, name is your majesty your Jackson. Majesty, yeah. but that's the kind of guy I could I could go on a road trip with your majesty Jackson. <laughs> yeah, that, he I could hang cool. out with that dude for twenty. 24 hours in a row, which is my maximum amount of time. Like, stay awake all night. Yeah. yeah. Give me some no-dos, and I got to talk to Your Majesty. 24 hours, and then uh, friendship over. Well, that's I've never hung out with somebody long. Maybe I could go for, to me, to me, 24 oh, hours. I thought is that you were saying majesty? that was the max you would hang out in a day. Yeah, in a row. In a row. Oh, in a day, yeah. yeah. I never thought of it. Look, for me, 24 hours is like the Mach 1. You can't break the sound barrier <laughs> right. in terms of friendship hanging out. Right, I right. I can't go longer than 24. I couldn't imagine it. Now, is this important to your whole deal? I don't think so. Uh, I wasn't get, get to so. what's important. Yeah, we're far into me talking. I was going to say odd jobs, my friends. Odds That's and ends, Odds man. and ends, man. Little things around the house. That's how I make my living. If you need a couple of, like, who knows, you need keys sharpened, maybe, or if you sharpened. need... Sharpened. Yeah, you need your keys sharpened. <laughs> to what end? <laughs> Well, maybe you're uh, maybe maybe they're not sharp enough for you. Maybe like sure. you, I don't need them sharp. Can I tell you something? Do you have any sharp keys? I I hate dull keys. Exactly. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> yeah. As long as they fit in the slot. Yeah, but well, have you ever heard of someone who has a self defense mechanism? They're walking down the street. They get and they nervous. hold their keys. In so between, they hold their like keys Wolverine. in between their knuckles. So they have like a little mini Wolverine exactly. thing going on. Yeah. If you got dull keys there. Good luck. Yeah, I guess that's true. But so do you want at least one or two sharp? Would keys. they not fit in the lock though? Oh, if they, they have like sharp, useless as keys. After <laughs> okay. That. That's All why right. you got to pick and choose. Don't give me your car key and have that sharp. Is, is and Wolver- I'll check. Is Wolverine supposed to denote a little wolf? But That's what interesting. Is that where the name Wolverine comes from? Yeah, I guess yeah. it is a uh, like teeny Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine. It's a well, slight, it's a slightly larger Wolverinillo. Wolverine. <laughs> What's that? Did you Wolverinillo? <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Everything all right? <laughs> what would what would a what would a Wolverine what would a Wolverette be? Yeah, I guess a female, a female Wolverine, a, a small a small female Wolverine. Were they backup singers, the Wolverettes, uh, in the seventies? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I think they were great. <laughs> Is this important to your deal? <laughs> I don't think so, but <laughs> aside from sharpening I would keys. say after the Pips and the Supremes, I would like the Wolverettes. Mm-hmm. Do you know, I find it, uh, as, as a listener to the show, I find it's always tough for the second guest sometimes to, to get out their whole deal. That's just it's, as well. <laughs> because, it, well, by that point, there's three other people in the room. That's right. Um, uh, I like that you're making excuses for me. It could just be that my main deal is not germane enough to transcend, which I'm always willing or to Or your majesty. <laughs> it's not your majesty enough. Enough to uh, to make it to the surface. So you so you are what you do is you're hired. I'll head into a neighborhood. I'll wander in. <laughs> yes. I'll walk up to a house and I'll say, Hey, you got any little things that need done just Jobs. for a fair wage? Just a little thing. You need any keys sharpened? You want your uh, maybe some hinges tightened? Uh, you want something sanded? So ni- you want to get some knives duplicated? Yeah, you want some knives. <laughs> you know, hey, is this a good knife? I'll get right. it one just like it. I mean, do you, no. do you prefer the serratedness of this knife? Why not have two? Do you hang any drywall? Do you sure, I'll, I'll hang a little drywall. I'll hang a. I'll uh, put up. I'll paper a room. You mm-hmm. said that so languidly. Do you hang any drywall? Hey, don't don't mess with Doc over here. All Doc. right. Doc. Doc. So you, you're putting up wallpaper as well. Doc's, yeah, I'll put up some wallpaper if that's what you need. If that's what are you, you need an interior doing. decorator? I don't think so. If you need <laughs> furniture arranged in a certain way, maybe you need some upholstery. I'll do that. That's no problem. What about fixtures? Odds and ends. Sure, I love fixtures. Or if you want sort of a uh, theme of knickknack, I can help you decide that. <laughs> yeah, it really seems to me like you need to get into interior design. That's not how I see it. Because I'll also <laughs> sharpen those keys. I'll duplicate your knives. That's, that don't seems tell me to be that's interior. The only decoration. two things that are not interior decorating. Well, I at this do, point. well 
hey, I appreciate the feedback and I'll take it into consideration. What else do I do? Color schemes? Suggest <laughs> knocking down walls? Sure, yeah. Maybe open this room up a little bit. You know, maybe open floor plan. Let's get an island here in this kitchen, I'll say. That's a good odds and ends type of thing to do. <laughs> okay. Restructure the structure of the house. You, really, I think that your identity shouldn't be odds and ends, man. It should just be like, you know, a very famous interior designer. Oh, how much? What's a the fa- pretentiousness? Scott, what's the a fair pretentiousness. wage to you? Fair wage, two bits. Two bits Anything for all that? I charge for 50 two cents. bits. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. That's a, that's that four bits? I forget my bits to coin. <laughs> bits, two bits, two bits, is a, cents? Two two bits is, is a quarter. Yeah, so, so four bits is a uh, 50 cents. Mm-hmm. A saw buck is... Buck 50? No, I think that's $10. Saw buck is, yeah, I believe it's $10 or $5. One of the two. Boy, in my, in my it's family... Not a fi- it's not $5. That's a fin. That's a five dollars. Fin is five dollars. I believe a sawbuck is ten dollars. What do you call? Uh, what do you call? Slap me a couple of fish. Oh, that's our catcher. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, real deep in the who's on first sketch. They get into the <laughs> slap me a couple of fish. <laughs> let that's me, our let designated me. hitter. Can, Rupert, can I give you some advice? <laughs> I would love some. Were you to go into these, you know, travel around the neighborhoods, sure, wander, wander into, into a and suburb, and just suburb. offer myself peacefully, and, hands and up. Were you to knock on doors and were yeah. you to offer your services as an interior designer, you oh. could charge way more than two I bits, that, four bits, a I, saw buck, a fin. I just don't know the way society's going. You could going be charging, another, you know, $20,000. 20000 What would I do with $20,000? Come on, I'm not... Buy I, things. We were just talking about it earlier in the pay, show. Pay it's someone an alimony and a half. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we got there at the same time. That's fun. I got... Look, I don't need that. I got two sleeping bags and a pickup truck, and I am good. Why do you have two sleeping bags? Backup. <laughs> in case it rains, I keep one tied up nice and dry. I'll so, switch to my backup sleeping bag if it rains. So it's an open flatbed truck, and you sleep that's in the back? Right. Open that's concept? Right. All right. It's, Roop. it's open in concept and in space. That's right. Roop, you'll forgive me. I, I want to know. I love Roop. Right? Hey. Easy, unpretentious. You say you have two sleeping bags. That's right. Is there a lady in your life, <laughs> or a, or a person? I don't like to. Uh, I don't like to kiss and tell, but uh, absolutely. Well, the fact that he was almost a Trump guy made me think that he was definitely. <laughs> a, I'm not almost a, a Trump guy. Hey, hey, I was straight backing man. into that. I know I, you're not. I, I, accidental, I'm a accidental Trump guy. I, yeah. yeah, yeah uh, no on. opinion yeah. on politics at yeah, all. Yeah, accidental I, Trump guy. I know. <laughs> I know. It's serious. <laughs> Another one on the playlist. <laughs> I've seen that video. <laughs> you have. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. One, I saw that one at three <laughs> views. I can't believe I'm, I'm meeting the people that have <laughs> provided all the views of my and page. And the current husband of your first ex-wife. <laughs> well, you still oh, yeah, call- that too. That's also strange. <laughs> yeah. That's you still, also strange. You called accidentally Trump supporter. You still called it girlfriend in a coma, so I was looking for that song. <laughs> I forgot to change the... I, you know, because I was thinking girlfriend in a coma. Sure. This is what the song is. Paradising. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot to change the name. Paradising. Paradising. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a, uh, our term of art. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I've been back. I backed into Trump rallies by mistake. I've gotten in there to do. <laughs> Wait, you were walking backwards? I walked yeah, backwards, you so truck, I didn't you see what it was. Truck in. I right. backed my truck in. I get out. I walk well, you, backwards. You were probably, you're probably uh, on the backside of a piece of furniture that you were walking into the. Trunk sure, I was helping out with some get, replacing some sofas for a for a. For <laughs> you a really should be charging a lot more for this. I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have such a simple lifestyle? Don't you? Would you? W- oh, that's all you need, Scott. Yeah, that's but, all you need. But, I mean, surely when it rains, you. Would get desire wet. a, a get roof? Wet. O- yeah, but what about a roof over ah, your head? I love the rain. What I love about the what, stars? What about a my... nice split level roof over your head? Well, open now concept. S- <laughs> now you're speaking my language. I mean, <laughs> although you can do a lot with just a simple colonial. <laughs> Are you allowed to live in a WeWork? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's 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 always been my opinion. I'm not sure if I'm the authority, really. <laughs> <laughs> this is more of a legal matter, right? Yeah, you know, ask for forgiveness and not permission has been my strategy. Yes, with, exactly. Right, yeah. It works. Well, how did you get interested in the various odd jobs that you do? Well, I was a stockbroker. Mm. I owned mm. Goldman mm. Sachs. Oh, <laughs> you owned it? I did. Well, this is And I said, is... this life is not for me. Wow. And I walked away from it at the height of my power. What did you not wow. like about it? The stress? The... the stress was bad. The greed, the mm. the type, the character of the people that you would work with. Who's worse, Goldman or Sachs? I, it, well, this is between you and me and the lamppost, of but course. I'd say Sachs by far. Really? Mm. Yeah, Goldman will stab you in the stomach, Sachs in the back. That's mm. that's the difference Sachs between those two. in the back. Yeah. Yep. Sachs in the back is... Uh, Out of the park home run. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing sacks in the back, right? <laughs> it's a parody of sexy back. That's, Wait, you're saying yeah. sa- can we sure. back up? You're saying sacks in the back is the name of a home run? Or just, Out of the park. Or he hit, 
It's a type of home run? Yeah, yeah. One that so goes out of the park, you know, over the uh, over I hate the back to destroy a bit that was working well, and I'm going to now ruin it. But All right. like, before well, it was we were, arguable. We were giving the names of people on the team, but now you're naming just, <laughs> just things that things happen that in the ballpark. During terms. a game. So like Sports inside terms. the park home run might have the name like <laughs> participle or something like that? <laughs> something like that. Ah, okay. I like to know the rules of where I'm wandering about. Inside the park home run? Well, that's a hockey goal. <laughs> <laughs> so you, Roop, you uh, you left Goldman Sachs and at then the height you, of my powers. And then, but how did you get <laughs> interested in these odds and ends? Well, I was like, you know, this isn't working. This abstract numbers and space, sure, and I mean, like we yeah. say this is valuable. And so now that I say that I own you, money is just a concept. Right. It's just Ooh. a concept. Give me something I can put my hands Don't on. Don't say that. Yeah, working. <laughs> well, I mean, it's on. easy to disagree when you have a trillion of them. Well, but it's also, I love paying money to ex-wives. That's true. But you could, you know, Alimony Tony, if I could give you a suggestion, and it's just a suggestion. I'm not an expert in your field of Understood. whatever it is. Understood. But you could be paying them in, like, hard goods, you know, instead of, like, mm. Venmoing them or however yeah, the it is barter you're doing system? It. Sharp keys. Well, it could be ca- cash in a briefcase, or it could be, it could be some emeralds, or it could be... Uh, some gold oh, I, bars out of your safe deposit box. Right. But I, I thought you were going down the line of I could be exchanging services. Oh, yeah. For, I, I, sure, I could, yeah, you could be doing that, sure. too. Hanging I guess paintings bartering. in their home. Or yeah, whatever. you could be straightening paintings or maybe suggesting a uh, Light type of rug. Sure. Do you go down to, like, art dealers and pick out paintings as yeah. well? Yeah, <laughs> I usually go down there and I'll negotiate a price and I'll say this is the kind of uh, art You're that- also an art dealer. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Hey, that's not the way I put it. I buy paintings from fellows who work with their hands. <laughs> yeah, that's how art is made. People you guys do know it with Paul their hands. Klee? Do you know Paul Klee? Sure. sure. Buddy of mine. Nice oh. guy. Salt of the earth. It seems to me like you, you're you not that much different of a guy than when you worked at I just, Goldman Sachs wow, when you owned that it. that hurts. And oh, you were you know interested what? in t- interior design and art? No, 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 no. I'll, t- I'll take that. I'll take that and reevaluate my life tonight as I cry. You are wearing a double-breasted suit. Sure, but this I tie. made this. But I made this. Oh, really? Oh, and I the see. gold tie I fashioned. Oh, I see. Out of gold. Yeah. yeah. Out of liquid gold. And so are you paid so little because you, much like uh, uh, alimony, alimony, Tony. W- weird alimony, alimony, Tony over <laughs> here. Like, yeah. Is in, are you independently wealthy? Define independently wealthy. How much money would I have to have for you to feel comfortable saying I'm independently wealthy? Mm. That's a good question, Scott. Mm. What do you like think? Like if I had $10,000 in the bank, I don't think you'd say I was independently wealthy. No, certainly wealthy. not. No. How much even, no. even if I had $100,000, no. a sizable sum, Doc. No, that that's would maybe true. last. Yes, so you wouldn't say that's boy, he's at. not independently wealthy. No, no, you could no. run through that. How much oh, do no. you Doc, something you could run through a hundred grand easy, right? I did it on the way over. So how, I'm yeah, doing it right now. How much do you have? Liquid? Sure. Five hundred million dollars. <laughs> okay, see, oh. it's nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> I, I mean, I you would sneeze, sneeze at, at it, it maybe, <laughs> because you know. I, mean, I meant for you people, <laughs> but that's I don't a touch fraction it. of what I'm you're. I'm definitely not touch sneezing. It. Are I you like Jay Leno? <laughs> yes, in every way. Do you just survive He's on your stand up dates? Not just that. I laugh at headlines and I'm like, I got to tell somebody. <laughs> <laughs> My main conversation piece is get a load of this idiot. You ask a bunch just of like tourists. Jay Leno, yeah. You ask a bunch of tourists simple questions about history until one dumb person says something? Yeah, wait till I find an idiot and then we all laugh at them together. <laughs> What's the ratio of people who know the answer to not knowing the answer? Uh, one out of every 10,000 people doesn't know the answer. <laughs> but we love to laugh at it them. It takes a while. You find it because they have to it. look like kind of smart. You can't feel bad for them. You can't be like a real demon minus of a person. Yeah. Sometimes got, comedy a, is all about putting in the work to humiliate someone. Thanks, it's Doc. It's very true. It's very true. Well, it's, Rube, who, it's who wins. That's Rube, what I look at comedy. Rupe, we have to take a break if <laughs> hey, that's okay. of course. Uh, I got no, I'm not pressuring anybody. Sure. I mean, you have nothing to do. I mean, you have no responsibilities. Let and, me ask uh, you something. What's, yeah. uh, you, this room here. Yeah. You ever think about adding a couple like uh, I don't know something I don't know a Kandinsky around here? You ever, <laughs> I mean, I was going to say the same thing. Place? I don't yeah. know. Like, just some just conversation starter, really. Yeah, could you go find me one? I and... got one in my truck. Oh, okay, how much would I pay you for it? Two bits, baby. Two bits and sold. <laughs> yeah. All right, look, go down to your truck and get it. When right. we come back, how do I work this door? <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like a, you ever see a Velociraptor? Let me. I can always get the Part Velociraptor three? over here. Yeah. Yeah. Right, over here. Turn it down like this. Ow! Oh. All right, we're gonna be right back. Clever girl. Push in. Clever girl. Oh man, have you heard the news? I know what you're saying. Too much of it. Too much news to even keep track of. Well, there is one thing that I've been keeping close, close, and careful track of. That is postage rates. Postage rates. Did you hear the news? They've gone up again. When's the last time they ever went down? I don't think they ever have. 
That would be amazing, though, if one day they were like, you know what, so many of you are using the post office. We're going to cut a penny off this. Well, they won't. Those money-grubbing misers at the post office. Well, there is a solution. Thankfully, with Stamps.com, you can get five cents off of every first-class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. Bing, bam, Boom. That kind of savings, uh, it really adds up, especially for a small business. Plus, Stamps.com automatically calculates and prints the exact amount of postage you're going to need for every letter or package you send, so you're not going to overpay like, oh, what? Do I, I'll just stick eight stamps on this. I don't know. It's heavy. No, you will never overpay. You will never underpay ever again. Although, if I had a choice, I would rather underpay. Underwear? <laughs> Underpay. Best of all, stamps.com is completely online, which saves you time. There, you don't have to. What if you had to, if you to go to stamps.com, you had to drive as far as you had to drive to the post office? That would be ridiculous. It wouldn't make sense. Stamps.com, they figured that out. They're like, no, no, just put it completely online. Saves you time. No more inconvenient trips to the post office. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail using your own computer and printer. Anything you can do at the post office except smile at your local mail courier, you can now do from your desk. Although you could probably smile at anyone from your desk. I don't know whether they're going to see it. And you can do it for less. We use stamps.com here, and we have for years here at Earwolf. Uh, and uh, right now, you guys, all of our listeners, can get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. See for yourself why over 700, that'd be good enough, but 700,000 small businesses use stamps.com. Just go to stamps.com. Click on that beautiful microphone at the top of the homepage. Type in bang bang. That's stamps.com. Enter bang bang. Do, 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 do. Enter bang bang. <laughs> Comedy bang bang. We are back here with uh, Judge Sean Hoffman, yeah. our uh, treasured guest. How do you do? Uh, something in the house. We also have Weird Amoni Alimony Tony, who is a song parodist. That's right. Uh, <laughs> with one trillion dollars, were he to liquidate all about, of his assets? About one about. trillion. Sure. Yeah, it's hard to estimate. Yes. And then we have the similarly rich, and yet uh, uh, with only five hundred million dollars, it's a fraction of what uh, Weird Amoni Alimony Tony. Yeah, I'm not owns. ashamed of that. Uh, Nor should you be. Roop uh, Sharp. A.K.A. Rupert Sharp is here, the former owner of Goldman Sachs, who yep. uh, has brought in something during the break. This is a Kandinsky. A Kandinsky. This is wow. beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. It's beautiful modern song, yeah. era. Yeah, or early modern. It's not postmodern. This is beautiful. True modern. Yeah. Well, beautiful. How, how? But I, I don't quite Let's know what furniture here. would go. Now with this it. installation. Do you need to? We need to have this up here, right? Obviously, the, well, the sound stuff. It, well, it's really poor right now. We were hoping to add more because you can hear all the way into the lobby. Well, here's okay. Let's. We think we can kill two birds with one stone. Soon. Oh, okay. I'll show Sharpen these keys first okay. off. Then uh, we'll get rid of this foam here. We'll put some nice thick Picassos around. Okay. Not his prime oh. stuff because that's not worth it. <laughs> okay, Do but you know, can I, if I may, mm -hmm. may I suggest a, a Van Gogh or two? He really liked to slather on that paint. That's right. Oh yeah, the yeah. You, want, know, you or, want a quiet room? You yeah. want a nice quiet? You want like a nice absorbing tone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone who had a lot of paint on those bones. The impressionist. Yeah, the impressionist said like <laughs> get me going. Thick bones and a lot of meat on it <laughs> is how I would call those. Oh, I don't know. Are these going to appreciate? though in value because I'm really looking Who at it cares? as an investment. I wouldn't think about it that way. Well, they start, You're they looking start, at it all wrong. Yeah, they start depreciating. <laughs> once you take it off the easel, it starts to depreciate right away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, once, you, once you put your eyes on it, it's, uh, exactly. it loses half of its value. Well, mm -hmm. imagine all the people that have looked at those paintings. It's disgusting yeah. when you think about it. Well, the only it. way yeah. to enjoy art is to actually put your eyes onto the painting. <laughs> like push like, your eyeball, like full yeah. direct oh, yeah, contact? That's, that's Give a painting right. butterfly kisses. Do I have a painting of butterfly kisses? No, give, give a painting butterfly kisses. I but do have a painting. Do you have a painting of butterfly I've, kisses? I've dabbled in painting. And You've I, dabbled in painting. Look, can we see some of your work? Right here. This is my painting of the famous father-daughter dance song, Butterfly Kisses. Oh, my God. This is you familiar beautiful. with it? Wow. Wait, no, if I'm not mistaken, go, going by these brush strokes, yeah. what you've done is much like, uh, uh, like when they teach an animal how to paint, you've mm. dipped your eyelashes yeah. in paint. That's right. And used that as your brush. 
I think you got to be right up against the canvas <laughs> if you really want to. If you really want to capture the spirit of. What I was going to say you came in here in a suit and you uh-huh. have like various colored eyelashes. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> It's hard not to notice. I didn't want to say anything. It's very striking. That's yeah. so gracious of you. Yeah, it, it works. But I have to say, this is a beautiful painting. I'm almost moved oh, to tears please, looking please, at please. it. Please, don't I mean, don't say that. I, I can't. I can't take that kind of pretentiousness. Well, I mean, you're an art dealer who can actually make successful art yourself. I I, I don't. It, this is a hobby. My main my main way of living is <laughs> sharpening those keys, sharpening, sharpening keys, keys, duplicating knives, wandering into <laughs> suburbs and knocking on doors and just saying, "Hey, can I help out? You got two bits for a guy." Do you have any other hobbies? Any other side hustles? Uh, you know, I you know, is cello a side hustle? I don't know. I don't I, 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 <laughs> Cello, what? you guys are really not back it, by Isn't cello, cello the twentieth anniversary? <laughs> Cello, yeah, that's the 20th anniversary for a, a couple. You got to give each other cellos. Yeah. Mm, I may have misheard. <laughs> or <earlier>. cello shots. <laughs> oh, I love cello can, shots. Can you play a little bit of the cello? Sure. Oh, you have one right here in your bag. Hang on. I got to put it together real quick. It's a little, it's a three-piecer. Yeah. Uh, okay. How, how much click. would I owe you for this? Not two bits. Two, two bits, bits is easy. Okay, great. You, know? you got two bits? I have two bits right here. You're good yeah. for it, pal. Ah, that's just me warming up. And oh, now here's wow, the, that, that was so beautiful. Good. That was that was beautiful. beautiful. I just I like to I get my. Uh, I felt like I was on public radio. Yeah, and um, and now I'll actually play the cello. Sorry, I just like to have my vocal cords warmed up. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for sure. <laughs> oh, you were making the noise with your mouth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I definitely thought that was the cello. Oh no, no, you no. You no, were no, making no. the music with your mouth, much no, yeah, like Bismarcky. Just, just a, <laughs> yeah, he's my hero. Are you a cello ventriloquist? Cheltriloquist? A cheltriloquist. Bismarck Or a chill triloquist. I like to think I'm both. <laughs> Vencheloquist. Vencheloquist is the term. Mm-hmm. Hey, That's an elegant portmanteau. Um, <laughs> I hate clumsy ones. Oh, there's nothing worse. <laughs> All right. I think I got what you need right over Carlifer. here. Carlifer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Is that something? Oh, that was beautiful. Let me flip two bits at you. Much like Two Face. I will also donate two bits to you. Hey, I'll take that, pal. I don't have any cash. No problem, Doc. Something. We're buds. You're good for it. Oh, my gosh. Give me a broom next time I see you down at Leo's. So you're an art. Loving interior decorator who also side. plays the cello. The I'm an odds and endsman. That's that's all you got to know. Wow. What I mean, but you don't like anyone who's fancy. I can't stand them. That's trouble. Yeah, that's trouble. You get someone. You get someone who's got airs about them. They're going to stab you in the back or the front mm-hmm. or the side. Are you interested Ooh. in? Uh, obviously, you're very interested in the humanities. It seems obviously. Like. I mean, I wouldn't say that. I just hey, I like helping out around the house. <laughs> By playing cello concertos? Sure. Yeah, if somebody's, if there's a beast who needs soothing, you know, maybe an unruly child mm-hmm. that you need to, like, on a primal level, get them to, like, go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, help out around the house that way, you know? Sure. Domestic dispute where you've lost that spark and that flame and you need some, the magic of music to just get you back in touch with your emotional self. Eh, so when, help out. when couples are fighting, you come over and play the cello? I'll be like, hey, let me see if this helps. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we'll just this see. might help you with your... Uh, uh, you know, well, this is why probably. I never play music around the house. Yeah, you because he wanted to. End. You don't Hello, allow music. <laughs> that is your, you know, my, You're, you my, are a musician. My not allowing music to be played in the house <laughs> is, I'm going to say, it's led to almost 100 percent of my divorces. No music in the house, and yet no you write parody songs. Yes, it's just for me. Uh-huh. I get to go to my studio uh-huh. and I get to do studio. my par- yes, my studio, and I get to do my parodies, but I forbid music being played in the house. You have a studio in your home at most times? At most times. <laughs> and uh, when do you not? <laughs> I have a studio uh, for painting, not a music studio, sure. but right. a painting studio. In the truck? Yeah. Where do you live? In my truck. The you studio live, yeah, is the passenger tr- seat. Right, 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 right. Is your truck <laughs> parked sense. anywhere like a giant mansion or? Uh, it's on an, I mean, I don't know if it's a giant mansion. Uh, <laughs> it is a six bathroom, 10 bedroom house. Oh, where, in what city? Uh, uh, Upper West Side. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> well. Right up by the cloisters. <laughs> huh, I just park it up there because I like to be near nature. 
Do you know, I like sure. to think of the, the, the cab of your truck. Thank you. Uh, with the... <laughs> well, there's, no, no, there's thank more. you for thinking of it. <laughs> oh, is that, I like being thought of in any context. <laughs> with, if the passenger sees your painting studio, I like Correct. to think of it all just covered with paint. Yes. And then the other side, the driver's side, completely Immaculate. pristine. And it's like the Batman villain Two-Face. Oh, I just oh. mentioned him not five minutes ago when I flipped my two bits at him. The Batman, oh, the Batman yeah, villain, Two Face. Mm -hmm. Why not three? Maybe that's why it was in your head. Why not something. three face? He why could have been. Like, that's a thing. He could have been like a Neapolitan ice cream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one chalk straw. One good looking side. <laughs> then in the center, like it's oh, home. Right. It's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. And then on the other side, oh, Italy is this guy. This guy just really like a. Uh, <laughs> What do you call that on the uh, on the? You would know this. You're a painter. When That's you, right. I when know you, all this. When you do the uh, uh, painting, that uh, not a triptych necessarily, yeah, it's but oh, I beg your pardon. You, you know when you're doing a wall and it goes from like one color down to a darker color, a but it blends. Oh, oh gradient. 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 Not gradient. A gradient. Either. God damn it! What is it called? Maybe it's you a, know, and you're wanting me to say it. And no, you can just no, tell it's a certain. You know. No, I don't. It's a certain technique <laughs> where you uh, uh, Trump loyal. It's not it, but I just wanted to throw. Did you say Trump? You just like no. Hey, come on. Are you a Trump? No, no, no. Seems to me like you. I want no, to talk not, about no, Trump. No, 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 why no, are you, trust me. Why are you giving me the OK symbol right hey, now? Hey, no, 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 that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> why, do you, why do you have a cartoon frog on your T-shirt? <laughs> hey, that's a coincidence. I like the composition You're wearing a this. business suit, a cartoon frog T-shirt, and you have multicolored oh, eyelashes. A red baseball cap turned backwards. <laughs> yeah. so we don't know what it says on the front. Turn, Is well, it a Cleveland Indian? We're out of season. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a, who's not a fan of Cincinnati? Phillies or what? Turn yeah. around. I'd love no, to see why the... bother? Who cares? All I'll right. All right. I'll take that as an answer. Yeah. Let's not get distracted. The cap's just to let people know I'm just a guy. Do you have anything else you want to talk to us about? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying did I have other issues that I came in here with to discuss? I don't know. I, I, I'm wondering I how much of this ended asking. up being your deal and how much of it was not your deal. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I what I I guess I'll, I, I'll maybe I'll, I'll leave you with a moral. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we should right. we should all do this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you know, and and I, my morals, by the way, the, uh, take them or leave them. Like I'm not sure. a pushy guy. Is that the moral? Take them or leave them. Take uh, them or leave them. No. That's a pre moral moral. That's okay. a pre moral. That's right. a moral for the moral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The moral for this moral is take it or leave it. But the actual moral is, don't mix traditional with a modern aesthetic. Because it'll look like shit. Okay, this mm. doesn't sound like a moral. This is like design advice. I wouldn't say so. That's a moral for life. I think that you should have your own show on on HGTV the home. or yeah, something. I would HGTV. never do it. I would yeah. never do that. Why? Because I because I, I can't stand to be that kind of guy. I can't have airs about me. But I mean, you're gonna roll into a bar, play a game of you, darts, you maybe don't help out the guy. You seem like a regular guy. guy. That's you're wearing who I am. a you're wearing a Pepe T-shirt. You have multicolored eyelashes. Come on. You have five hundred million dollars. Look, in you the have, bank. In you're the wearing, bank. You're wearing a suit. Thank you. You have a gold tie. Sure. A Pepe T-shirt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> backwards hat. You have multicolored eye, eyelashes. And we have you're wearing a backwards baseball. We have opinions on what's guy. on the front side of that hat. You have opinions, but you haven't seen. <laughs> Talk something. Have you seen the front of my hat? No, it's like Is a, that why you're always backing into places? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, hey, what are you, what are you, the, what are you, the walk auditor? Come on. Oh, we got you there. Uh, damn it. Yeah. Well, look. All uh, right, John, what's your moral? Yeah, what's your moral? <laughs> Doc something, your moral. You're not ready? No, I'm not. Uh, I would say the secret, uh, secret to a happy marriage. Mm, this is good. Is um, listening. Mm. Uh, compromise. Get over yourself. Mm. King size bid. Mm. And make sure you find someone who was briefly married in total darkness for <laughs> six months to a year. So, so they're used to it. We wow. they're, they're, so you look good by comparison. Right. What I love about that advice is anybody can follow it. Anyone. It applies exactly. to any yeah, situation. Any situation. Exactly. Yeah, any situation. Of course. Well, any, no matter how much money yeah. you have in the bank, be it one trillion, be it five hundred million. Yeah, two the bits. simplest advice is always the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which what itself is good advice. A little life lesson. Uh, a little life Scott? lesson for me. Uh, well, you know, I gotta say, happy wife. Duplicate that knife. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's a good one. You know, <laughs> because you don't want you don't want to be knifeless. You know, when you're chopping yeah. up, uh, chopping broccoli, as Dan right. Carvey so, said. Uh, happy wife, duplicate that knife. Mm -hmm. Wife not happy, that knife is too crappy. <laughs> exactly. I, right. You only have one of the knife that's too crappy. Exactly. I appreciate yeah, exactly. how your majesty these are to the things I was talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, 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 weird, weird, <laughs> weird Amoni <laughs> Alamoni My moral, you can change the words to a song, but that doesn't erase the original song. That song is still there for you to enjoy. It sounds like a legal defense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like to not get sued. Can it be both? I, why not? 
I the, wish more court cases ended with morals. <laughs> <The> mor- <laughs> I wish every episode of Judge Judy ended with it, like her turning to the camera, like J- uh, Jerry Springer's doing yeah. a final thought or something. What did we learn today? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the end. Oh, the oh, end. Oh, oh the end. You're like well, Coco Marx. Like <laughs> Coco Marx? <laughs> he, he would oh, end every joke sure, by saying Coco the end. Marks. That's right. <laughs> the end. Uh, yeah. So, so that's my Wonderful. moral: is uh, you can still enjoy the original song. Uh, any any tampering with it doesn't change Wonderful. your enjoyment of that original song. Except well, I, uh, the. Yeah, I hope our listeners uh, got a little something out of that. Four morals from four straight white rich men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not rich. I'll only on paper. <laughs> I am rich. The pa- wait, what papers? The papers of your bank account? Yeah, the, the currency statements? and the bank the money, statements. The money paper. Yeah, and the deeds <laughs> that I have. The property that yeah, I own. Yeah, right. Now, is that the paper, assets I control. Is that paper solid, liquid, or other? Uh, some of it's gaseous. Oh, Why? thank God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Liquid gold. I can still afford that alimony. Well, guys, we're running out of time here, but uh, we are only we? have... Yeah, we really are. And the yeah. only thing that we have left to do here is a little something called plugs. I got ads, got shows going on and they're so hot. Got a mean pod, got a team of writers on my staff, and they get it like... Plugs. P-L-U-G-P-L-U-G-N. Plugs. P-L-U-G-P-L-U-G-N. I got a good thing in a dope show at CISO. Oh, boy. Huh. IFC with a CBB. Look, they see some more. Whoa. That's really, that's just a reason one. Whoa. Hey, young man. Running down my uh, biography, it seems, <laughs> of all my accomplishments. <laughs> uh, that was Plug the Jewels by what Revolver. What if it said, I died at 51 years old? <laughs> oh, no. I would have a lot more fucking to squeeze in. <laughs> 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 um, guys, what are we plugging? Uh, let's go to uh, Judge John Hoffman here. Sure. Well, uh, strangely enough, uh, I also host a podcast. Mm, that is odd. And while my name is Han Judgman, the <laughs> podcast is called Judge John Hodgman. Okay, I get it. It's available weekly at uh, Maximum Fun. We- you do that every single week? Every single week. Sir. Wow. Yeah, and and it. are the cases, are they well, different this- enough? Uh, uh, meaning, do you get the same cases all the time? Like, this is what my <laughs> argument is? Quite honestly, Scott, today I'm going to hear a case that is identical to the 11th case I ever heard. <laughs> Okay. And we are now on, I think, 370. <laughs> and have have you <clears throat> sort of advanced in your thinking where you may give a different result to the... Uh... As, a, as a matter of fact, when I realized that we're hearing the same case again, and this is the first time it's happened, mm-hmm. I asked our producer to go back to the 11th episode, <laughs> listen to the verdict that I gave in that right. dispute, which was how people pronounce their last name, their family okay. name. And see but if it don't matches. But re- don't reveal it to me. I'm going to hear this case, and at the end, we'll I'll see, give my verdict. We'll see if it compares we'll see, we'll or see if contrasts. I'm, we'll see if I'm a, 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 a consistent right. or just a fickle or dilettante. Or maybe you've evolved in maybe your I, thinking. Maybe you know, people changed. can change their thinking. I don't think so. Though. I had neighbors, by the way, who said their names very differently. What, 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 what I do not want to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Publicly. Uh, well, that's great. And, and anything else out there? You got uh, uh, My book, Vacation Land. Vacation Land, of course. Paperback. It's a wonderful read. Like I said to you in... In your previous episode, I felt like at the end of it, I knew so much about you. I felt like I should write you a book about my life. Well, I have another book due that I'm working on now. But if you wanted to write it for me, that would be no, great. No, no, I don't want to write your book about your life. I want oh, to write th- you like a, a book about my life. Like a book length. So thank, that you would you know as, as much about me as I know about you. No, thank you. I'm oh, not interested. All right. All right. <laughs> all right very good. Uh, Roop. Hey. What are you plugging here? <laughs> Well, I got nothing to plug for myself, but there's a podcast I listen to that I like very much called Screw It. We're just going to talk about the Beatles. And oh, I a lot of be- it. recent Beatles activity. What, with the White Album reissue? Oh, uh, boy, yeah. There's a lot of news for a band that broke up in 1969. Mm, Paul McCartney reissues as well. The Yeah, he reissued the Wildlife. Yeah, and, albums yeah. that nobody cared Red about Rose then, Speedway. and now we care about them. Yeah. And, uh, and he has a new album. Yeah, boy. So a lot, a lot to talk about a on lot that show, stuff. it seems. Yeah, yeah. A lot of new current stuff. Check mm-hmm. it out. Great. Please. Anything else? That it? I'll do a uh, screw. We're just going to talk about Spider Man 2. If you're a middle aged, <laughs> if you're a middle aged, sad, media obsessed dude, check out those Walking two through the supermarket. <laughs> yep. <laughs> those, that's all I got. Okay. Is, great. It, is that, uh, let's talk about Spider Man 2 or let's talk about Spider Man. Also. Also, yeah, okay. it's like uh, the, as a second podcast. Right. So it's not, not, not just, just devoted to talking yeah, about Spider-Man just talk about okay. Spider-Man 2, although you know what? might be a more fun podcast. I, you could, yeah. Have yeah. you guys seen that movie, Spider-Man 2? Yeah. Spider-Man 2, sure. Spider-Man? I've seen it, yeah. Oh, that's Spider-Man. weird a Yeah. Well, I'd like to promote my YouTube channel, of course. <laughs> what's, it, what's it called again? 
Why would I say that? <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't have time for the whole thing. Oh, that's too bad. I'd also <laughs> like to promote uh, uh, the this guy. Paul F. Tompkins has some shows coming Love up. Love him. Oh. Oh, that's nice to hear because uh, I, I think he's very funny. You know, I'm a fan of the show. Sure. Uh, I wish you'd be on more and not just on the best ofs. <laughs> that proves my fandom. I enjoy that. <laughs> um, he is, uh, he's got some shows coming up in this, the new year. Uh, Friday, January 25th, you could catch him at the Music Hall Theater in Detroit, Michigan. I, I, I hate to tell you, but that one is already passed. <laughs> oh, is that so? Yes. Well, you missed it. Let's talk about <laughs> shows in the future. How about this? This will be Sunday, February 2017th. Is that to be in the clear? I hope so. Yeah, February, you don't know. Right? Sunday, okay. February 17th. You were very definitive and a little bit rude about uh, Well, I definitely know that, that it, that is in the, the, in the uh, past. Okay. I don't know whether this one is in the future All or the right. past. I hope that it is. Well, then why don't I just say, fuck it. <laughs> what? what what's, the, what's the point? No, but talk about the February 17th. No, that's version. fine. That's really? fine. That's fine? Yeah, that's fine. You just plug in the idea of Paul F. Tompkins. I, yes, please. He's out there as an entity. Check him Check out. Him will, out. will he be near you? Go to paulftompkins.com slash live to find out. He may mm. be right next to you. <laughs> what if you, or what if this, this person. I'm sorry, I leaned on your cello. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, a, that's no problem. I was about to disassemble it anyway. Um, what if what if Paul F. Tompkins just broadcast his location at every point of the day? Like if you went to his website and there was a GPS and you could just find him. Like a little red pin on a map? Yeah, that would be fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Talk to him about it. I, that was a what if I was not prepared for and didn't know how to answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, I want to plug, uh, I don't know, uh, Freedom. Our, uh, I have a show with uh, the previously aforementioned... Uh, Paul F. Tompkins, as well as Lauren Lapkus. That comes out on Thursdays. If you like this show, go check out that show. Why wouldn't you check out both? I you think know you what should I mean? check out both, certainly. Well, uh, time is finite, but sure. <laughs> okay. All right. I enjoy that show very much, by well, the way. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I, like I know time is finite because I'm dying at 51. Uh, let's close up the old plug bag with the new plug bag theme. Close your eyes and open <laughs> more more false endings than Layla <laughs> <laughs> and Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Return of the King. Uh, guys, I want to thank you so much. Uh, it's so good to see you, John. Yeah, it's, it's so great to see you. Thank you so uh, thank much. You. Please, anytime you're in town, give me a call. Would love to uh, either fun. know you're in town or have you on the show. I enjoy being in town and on the show. Uh, and Roop, uh, hey. you know, uh, really, I think you should be charging more, but you don't need it. So I, the I like I like your style. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I you're, love that positivity. You're almost like doing stuff uh, on pro bono in a way. Are you? In, uh, do you have any legal uh, advice as well? Uh, for people? Uh, yeah. Uh, don't break laws. <laughs> good enough for me. That's yeah. a good umbrella legal advice. Yeah. And then Weirdimony Alimony Tony, always good to meet you. It's always good to meet you too, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I, f I fear this is our only time. I wouldn't be so sure. <laughs> no, that, I'm going to meet you. you oh, that's you, true. You may be on the show several you times. Say, you say that I, to everyone you meet, right? Yes. Yeah. It's always good to meet you. I fear this is the you. only time we're going to meet. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, we'll see you next time. Let's all go through that door like velociraptors. Here we go. Oh, I can't get this. I don't understand. I'm pushing up, but it I know nothing. I got it before. I'm pulling just directly towards myself. Oh, I'm pushing. I think that's the ah at the same time. That's yes. bad. Okay. Three, two, one. Ow! <laughs> Want to hear Earwolf pilots before anybody else? We made a podcast feed just for you. Earwolf presents is full of great stuff like preview episodes for upcoming shows, peeks behind the paywall, and pilots for podcasts that haven't even been made yet. It's like getting to listen in behind the scenes here at Earwolf. Starting January 21st, Earwolf Presents will have a bunch of new pilots for you, like Edgar Montplacier's The Wokest. Catch conversations between the wokest man in the world and comedians like Reza Lachea. Also, hear upcoming pilots The Florida Cast, Wow, You're Native American Too, This Week in Sports, and Carl Alarm all throughout the month. 
Let us know what you think of them with hashtag Earwolf Presents. Subscribe to Earwolf Presents to hear more great episodes from around the network and behind the paywall, like an episode of Drew Tarver's Strictly Business with Derek Contrera, or Act One of Matt Besser's punk musical, Stolen Idea. Just search for Earwolf Presents in your podcast app and subscribe so you don't miss an update. 